Now for the talk. The title of this talk is Anomalies in Coincident Probabilities in EPR Data. The theme of this conference in Turun, Poland, held in June of 2010, is Quantum Channels, Quantum Information, Theory and Application. It is often stated that all of quantum information theory rests upon the validity of Bell's theorem. But in this talk, I will give an alternate explanation for long-distance communication and quantum channels. In particular, I will show that a subquantum theory reproduces all the correlations of quantum mechanics, as well as accounting for the anomalies. This subquantum theory is both local and realistic. It is definitely not classical. From quantum mechanics, it is only possible to calculate the EPR coincident probabilities using an entangled state. I will do it from a subquantum product state. So what are the anomalies? Adna and Krenikov reanalyzed the 1998 data of Gregor Weiss. They found that whereas the overall correlation agrees with experiment, the joint probabilities, or the coincidences, display anomalies. Since quantum mechanics is used to calculate these, and since they do not agree with quantum mechanics, then the whole of Bell's theorem is cast into doubt. Adna and Krenikov conclude, if we follow Bell's reasoning, then both classical and quantum models should be rejected on the basis of present experimental statistical data. In this talk, I will present a new subquantum theory which resolves the anomalies which are found in coincident EPR experiments. This is the experiment that Clauser, Horn, Shimoni, and Holt devised to test Bell's theorem and to specifically show that quantum predictions are correct. Let's review this experiment again. A source of two spins in a singlet state remain correlated upon separation. One spin moves to Alice and the other to Bob, who both have filters at specific orientations, angles theta A and theta B. Sometimes the photons pass the polarizers and sometimes they are absorbed. If both pass, the coincidence is recorded as two clicks, plus plus. Likewise, if neither pass the filters, the coincidence is minus minus, etc. Over a run of many thousands of coincidences, their frequencies give the probabilities. This particular sum of the coincidences gives the correlation, and it is this correlation that violates Bell's inequalities. A and B are the angles of the polarizers at Alice and Bob. Usually, Alice's polarizer is set equal to zero, and Bob's is rotated through two pi radians. A significant result of the subquantum theory is that it agrees with the experimental results as a product state with no quantum channels, no entanglement. It predicts a new quantum state for spin that cannot be predicted from quantum mechanics and which is supported by the experimental agreement. Not only does it agree with quantum mechanics, but it is also consistent with the anomalies found. The photon coincident experiments are the only ones upon which the validity of Bell's theorem rests. Let's look at the results from quantum mechanics. It is obtained from the density operator that describes an entangled singlet. It is the outer product of the usual singlet state, and it is straightforward to calculate the well-known results for the correlation and the coincidences to give the usual minus cosine theta and the expressions for the coincidences. But it appears that the experimental data suggests that the coincidences do not agree with quantum mechanics, even though in the sum these anomalies tend to cancel. Contrast that with the results from the subquantum theory for the coincidences, which are presented here without proof for now. It is important to accept that this is not a quantum state, but a subquantum calculation based upon one pair of spins, or that is, one biparticle. It does not correspond to an ensemble. It corresponds just to two particles with spin. 
For comparison, the quantum result is just one half, which is obtained by ignoring entanglement. It fails to agree with the experiment and must be incorrect. There is no coherence between them if we take quantum mechanics as a product state. Now this expression as a product of two spins is called a biparticle because the two members have the same orientation and carry the same hidden variables. When the singlet state was produced at the source, the two entangled spins shared common elements. These hidden variables are nz and nx, both of which are integers with values of plus one and minus one. The angle theta orients a subquantum structured spin in three-dimensional space relative to the laboratory frame. Let us maximize the probability of Alice. It is easy to differentiate the trig terms, so we find that theta A minus theta must equal 45 degrees, giving a probability of 1 for Alice's side. That is, for any setting of Alice's polarizer, we pick out or filter only one sub-ensemble of spins. But unless Bob's filter is the same as Alice's, which it generally is not, then Bob's probability will not be maximized because his spin must have the same hidden variables as Alice, that is, nz, nx, and theta. So we substitute the expression from Alice's, which is theta a minus theta equals 45 degrees, in Bob's probability, and then we agree with the results of quantum mechanics. Let's plot them. Compare again with quantum mechanics. Alice's filter is set to zero, and Bob's is varied from minus pi to plus pi. Both the subquantum and quantum mechanics agree, but the subquantum theory uses a specific set of hidden variables. However, it is important to note that to date, no product state or disentangled state has ever been able to reproduce all the quantum effects. Since this is a local hidden variable theory, it shows that Bell's theorem is incorrect. There are other settings of the hidden variables other than the ones that maximize the probability and give the quantum result. Let's look at the anomalies. These are the joint probabilities and the full correlation as extracted by Kranikoff from Gregovi's data. Note that P++ and P++ do not coincide as quantum mechanics predicts. Also, the maxima and minima are shifted, even though these differences cancel when summed up appropriately. Now I should point out that these anomalies were first noted in the 1980s by aspect. But since the interest was in the full correlation and not the coincidences, and the full correlation agrees with quantum mechanics, it took Kranikoff's reanalysis of the data to discover these. Specific examples to measure the coincidences were not performed. The agreement is therefore qualitative and more experimental is needed to be quantitative. The most dramatic anomaly is shown in the marginal probabilities, which is given by the sum of P++ and P++, from which, from quantum mechanics, adds up to give a value of 0.5. We see that there is a marked difference between quantum mechanics and experiment. So now that my subquantum theory agrees with quantum mechanics as a product state, how does it account for the anomalies? Well, in a very simple and physically reasonable way which is what I will discuss next.